welcome back guys to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in the previous episode we created this UI where we can select our buildable but unfortunately it doesn't really matter which buildable we select it anyways will build only the foundation so in this one we are going to try to implement the floors so let's get to it what I'm gonna do first is uh, for my foundation I want and to be able to stack my floor on the top of this foundation. So first what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add another box collision. I'm gonna call this floor. And I'm gonna change the sizes 200, 200 by 16. And now as you can see uh, in the right side when I select my floor in these transforms, previously I said don't change the transforms for these uh, outer collision boxes but for this inner one we do need to change it a little bit otherwise it's gonna place it in the same location as this uh, foundation so let's move this up a little bit we might have to adjust this later on I'm gonna do this like it's halfway on it as you can see and uh, if it will not fit perfectly we can just adjust this higher or lower depending for our needs so I'm gonna compile and save and while I'm still selecting the floor, I'm going to change the collision preset to custom. And here I'm going to ignore the foundation build channel because this is going to be for our floor. So foundation does not need to stack on it. And I'm also going to ignore the wall build channel and block the floor build channel. So let's compile, save. I think that should be it for this, uh, this object. So let's go back to our build mode folder and I'm gonna create a new blueprint class and this is going to be a static mesh actor class let's select this and I'm gonna call this buildable floor and this is going to be our floor I'm gonna select static mesh component change the static mesh to floor there we go and I'm gonna add a box collision call this floor one and this is going to be pretty much the same way as we did with the foundation so if you watch the tutorial carefully you already know what I'm doing and I don't have to do too much of explaining if not I recommend you to watch the previous videos again just to remember things better and yeah to make it perfect you gotta practice you gotta practice and you gotta practice that's all you gotta do just practice practice makes perfect well Actually, no, practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes permanent. That's a thing, yeah. So, now I'm gonna adjust the last floor. So now this looks pretty similar to our buildable foundation. Awesome. Now I'm gonna select all the floors, collision boxes uh, for the floor, and go down to collision preset again, change this to custom, foundation I'm gonna ignore floor build block wall build ignore so there we go you can now compile and save this this should be good and now what we gotta do we need to go to our third person character so there we go third person character blueprint I'm gonna move this to the first tab and now we need our build mode and what we can do now is I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger I'm going to drag this back and I'm going to do a switch on end here. So depending on the selection, we are going to select a different build function, sort of. So the selection is going to be a build ID. There we go. And the foundation, if we go to our buildables database and we pop the first one open, we can see the first one is foundation. So ID is zero. So we connect this here. I'm gonna disconnect the default pin. And now to build the floor, what we need to do is we need to, I'm gonna open up these build system functions. And here we have this build foundation, this function. And I need to control W to duplicate it. And I'm gonna rename this to build floor. So this is right now the same function as the foundation function. And we are going to adjust this a little bit. So I'm going to select the trace channel for my line trace by channel. And I'm going to change the trace channel to floor build channel. And 
Next, I will go to spawn build ghost function. So now in this spawn build ghost function, what we can do is we can drag in our buildables database. So we need to get this database. And now when we drag from this, we need to get a reference and we need to get a reference to our build ID. So since our IDs are equal to the array IDs, then this will work perfectly. And I'm going to drag from this and do a break. I'm going to move this down a little bit. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag from this build ghost and I'm going to do a set static mesh. And I'm going to set the static mesh to this break result of the static mesh. So now if we compile and save this, go in game, if we pr pick a different buildable. Oh, nothing happens. Of course, nothing will happen yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if we, we need to go back to the event graph, we don't have a function here. So what we can do though is we can select the, well actually if we would connect these all to our build foundation, we would still get the result that we are looking for. So there we go, wall, door, but yeah, as you can see, if we build and it still wants to snap to the foundation location because we only have the foundation available to us right now, but the previews are spawning. So that's good. So I'm going to disconnect these and now I'm going to go back to my build floor function. So I have floor build channel. And here we have this, did we hit foundation? And we don't need to hit a foundation. So I need to duplicate this event. So I'm gonna select, did we hit foundation? Control W. And I'm gonna change this to, did we hit floor? And here I'm going to remove these foundations like this. And I'm going to remove this buildable foundation and I'm going to do a cast to buildable floor. There we go. And as buildable floor, I need to get floor one, connect this like the foundation was, get floor two, there we go. Get the next one. And the last one. And if you paid attention and you still remember, we did create one more box, not in the buildable floor, but in the buildable foundation. So we, here we have another floor. So what do we do now is we can remove this cast failed return node. And from this buildable floor cast failed we can do a cast to buildable foundation. And we need to connect the object to this actor. And now if we fail the cast, we need to get floor from our buildable foundation. And we need to check if it is equal. We need to check if it is equal to our hit component. So I'm going to connect this over here. So now we need to do a if check. And if we did hit this, then we can go to this return node or we can make another one and just connect this transform over here. Because this hit component is going to be the component that we hit regardless of the actor that we have hit. So we are first, if we did hit something, it's going to check if this is the buildable floor. If it's not, then it's going to check if it's the buildable foundation actor. And then it's going to check if we did hit this floor. And now I'm going to copy this false 
return node. I'm gonna paste this here. I'm gonna connect this to false and on cast failed, I'm gonna do the same node. So something like this. Now we can compile and save. I hope I didn't forget to connect any pins, I guess not. Now we can go back to our build floor function. And now we need to change this did we hit foundation. So I'm gonna drag in did we hit floor. I'm gonna connect the actor to our hit actor and I'm gonna get connect hit component to our component. Now I'm gonna delete this did we hit foundation. Move this into the spot, connect to is valid, connect to the branch, return value to the branch condition and transform to set build transform. Now I'm gonna compile and save. And now we need to actually allow the system to build, well teach how to build a floor. So we need to go back to the event graph. We need to go to the mouse left button. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. I'm gonna move these down a little. And I'm going to, from this true, I'm going to do a switch on integer again. And depending on the build ID, it's going to do a different route. So I need to make this bigger again. Not enough space. So there we go. So I'm going to add pins. So if it's ID zero, we're going to do build foundation. But if it's ID one, we're going to spawn actor from class again. And this is going to be the buildable floor and we're going to use the same spawn transform or build transform and connect this to stop build mode. So there we go. That's it for this. And one more thing that we need to do is we need in our build mode on the ID one, we need to do a build floor function. And we need to change this restart node needs to go here before the switch. So there we go, compile and save. We go in the game, select the floor and voila, we have our floor. And it does stack, it does work like it's supposed to. Now let's test out the foundation. As you can see, foundation should not snap to the floor. It shouldn't do it. It should be freely movable. So I'm going to put the foundation now and with the floor, as you can see, the floor does not snap next to it, but it does snap on top of it. And I'm pretty good with the positioning of this object. In case you are having issues with the stackability position, I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to open up this buildable foundation. And if we select this floor and move this up, even more. I'm going to compile and save, go back to the game, build foundation. And if we put the foundation like this floor, see, oh, I got stuck. So if you're having issues, if it's too high, too low or something, then that means that you need to go to this buildable foundation and you need to adjust this collision box. So there I have mine. It's all good. And I hope we still have time. Well, anyways, we're going to fix this issue with building within the objects. So I'm going to open up my build mode right here. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this forward. And here before the switch, I'm going to do a sequence. What this does is it will launch the first one and then the other one. And I'm going to connect this here so that this would launch all the time. And here from the second one, I'm going to do actually, I'm going to drag in the build ghost first and I'm going to do is valid because if we haven't spawned a build ghost, this will not work. So if the build ghost is spawned, I'm going to do a box trace by channel. It is a very similar thing to the line trace, but 
as you might already understood from the name, this is going to create a box around the object rather than shooting a straight line. I'm going to uh, uh, leave the trace channel to visibility so that it would trace all the objects. And I'm going to, from this build ghost, I'm going to drag and I'm going to get, get component bounds. And from these component bounds, I'm going to get this box extent. Um, I want my build to move, uh, be allowed to go into the wall just a tiny bit. So I'm going to divide this uh, vector by a float. You actually don't, you, you don't have to do this, but you could do this if you want to have this system just like me that I am allowed to build a little bit within the walls. If you don't, you can just directly connect this right here. And with the origin, I'm going to do the to the start position. And for the end position, I'm going to minus vector minus vector so that end and start wouldn't overlap one another. And I'm going to do this point one minus vector point one for the end position. So something like that. I'm going to move this down a little more. And now we need to check if we did hit something. If we did, then we need to make our build ghost red. And for the transform, we use our build transform again. So now we can compile and save. We can press play foundation. And as you can see, if we go into the f into an object, it does not allow us to build anymore. So we can't build things up high in the air no longer. So if you place this on the ground, we can't build inside of this no longer. We can still stack this. We can still stack the floors, but we foundations and floors, but we cannot build this within a different object. So that's great. And now, now, and that's going to be it for this tutorial. We have fixed an issue and also we have stacked our floors. And in the next tutorial, we're going to try to implement some more objects uh, like walls, for example. And I think those should be pretty straightforward. So see you guys in the next video.